Hey guys, it's Codexual with another video. So if you are having problems with your internet and you know all of your other devices are able to get online and then it's the computer that we gotta troubleshoot. So this is for Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 8.1, and Windows 10. So all in general is it's gonna be for a Windows platform. So we're gonna start off with the Internet Explorer and yes it does say Firefox I just downloaded Firefox but we're on Internet Explorer so um, it'll say tools or on the top right you'll see a cog or a settings gear uh, it'll be right below the red exit button on the top right and you'll click on that so but mine shows tools then you're gonna click on internet options now what we want to do is go to the advanced tab then click on reset so none of this is going to delete any of your uh, passwords but it'll delete everything else then all you gotta do is click on reset then once those three green check marks come up you click close it'll say for changes to take effect you need to reset the internet Explorer then go ahead and do so but we're not going to reset the computer yet because we're going to continue on so let's just say you reset the computer and yeah now uh, for the Google Chrome on the top right you'll see three vertical dots on the top right then you click on that you'll click on settings once another page will appear you'll scroll down I'll show advanced settings and then scroll all the way down again then you'll see reset settings again then you'll click on reset and it'll reset everything and again this will keep the passwords but it'll clear out all the bookmarks the history so th and that will go through then reboot your computer with that now as for Firefox what we're going to go to is the three um, lines that are going horizontal. Then it'll have this question mark button. Click on that. Then it will say restart with add-ons disable. Or excuse me. Go back to it. And it will say troubleshoot information. And right here, it'll say Refresh Firefox. That's where you want to go to. Refresh Firefox. And that does a browser reset as well. So it's finished. And so if that does not fix the issue, then we're going to go with a Winsock reset. So with a Winsock reset, you want to open up Command Prompt. You can, on the bottom left, click on the Windows menu. Type in CMD. You're going to right click on it and run as administrator. Now on Windows XP, you don't have to run as administrator, but from Vista and the newer versions of Windows, you're going to have to right click and run as administrator. So now what we're going to type in is N-E-T-S-H, enter, I-N-T, enter, I-P, enter, reset, enter then it'll say restart the computer to complete this action we're not done yet you're going to type in winsock w-i-n-s-o-c-k enter then reset again then enter now it reset the everything so this is where you're going to power down your computer and it'll come back right back up and if you're still having problems the last resort is going to be this. So what you want to do is on the bottom left, you will see Device Manager, or you got to type in Device Manager, and on Windows 8, 8.1, and Windows 10, it'll show for, um, it'll say Update uh, Settings, something among those lines, but you want to get to the Device Manager. So um, then you're going to look for Network Adapters. And yours will say something like this or something else. Um, let's give you a couple of examples of which one is your network. 
your network adapter that is. So, um, sometimes they'll say Intel Rail Tech or something like that. Then 10 slash 100 slash 1000. If it says 10 slash 100,000, uh, oh, right there that immediately tells you that's an ethernet you are connected through a ethernet cable to your modem or your router um it'll also say you know ethernet it'll say something like that um and if it if you're on a wireless then it'll say uh wi-fi or real tech uh wireless something like that um and it'll say AC, or it'll say A slash G slash A slash B. Um, if it starts showing that, and that's wi wireless. So if you're running uh, hardwire, then you know which one you should be at. If you're running wireless, it, then you know uh, between the two. So let's just say you are hardwired. And this is the same concept as for the Wi-Fi or wireless. Then you go down to the uh, drivers tab. You're going to click on uninstall. You're going to click OK. Then what it'll do, it'll uninstall the network drivers. And this is where you're actually going to reboot up the machine. So let's actually reboot it. Um, the drivers will come back. I promise you they will come back. Um, while that goes through, I actually want to, I'm on my Windows XP, or excuse me, I'm not on Windows XP, Windows 10, so I'm opening up uh, Device Manager on my Windows 10. It's slowly getting there. Okay, there we go. So now it will say network adapters. And right there uh, it says Broadcom 802.11. That's uh, wireless. So if it says 802.11, then that's uh, wireless. And let's just say you uninstall it. So you uh, double click on it or right click it on it, go to properties, then go to driver. Then you click on uninstall. It says you're about to uninstall this. Then you click OK. Sometimes right here in this little space, they will be a little check mark box that says, would you like to permanently delete? If that shows, do not click on it whatsoever. Do not click on it or else you're going to have more of a problem. Uh, if you do click on that, that means you're actually going to have to go get the software from you, the manufacturer itself and install it to get that driver back. So do not click on it if you see that um, little box that you can check mark that says mm -hmm. would you like to delete everything. So let's go ahead and hop back on our Windows 7 machine and see it's it's successfully installed back and just to double check device manager and there it is it installed it right back so these are the most three simple steps of um, how to fix everything and get you back up and running so um, now Sometimes on the bottom right, it'll say invalid IP address. If it says, oh, here, let me go ahead and disable that. Okay, so right here, it'll usually have a cautious sign that's yellow or a red X. And if it says IP address conflict or something with IP address, and you already did these steps, the last step of what you need to do is you want to go to Open Network and Sharing Center. And you're going to go to uh, Change Adapter Settings. Now, um, right here, this, this doesn't apply to you. I'm working on a network setting here really quickly. 
So don't worry about what I'm doing right now. Okay, now you can worry about what I'm doing. So, if it still says you're having an IP address problem, go back to the CMD command prompt and to find out this information, hop on another computer that is working with the internet and is connected to the router, the same router or the same modem that you have connected and type in IP config. <laughs> so, you're going to see this information and you want to automatically assign an IP address. Right now, um, you want to go to the local area connection. That means it's hardware. It'll say Wi-Fi or wireless area connection. And um, that's where you're going to troubleshoot if you're connecting through uh, wirelessly or Ethernet. Now, once you right-click and click on Properties, you're going to go to Internet Protocol Version 4, TCP IP V4. You're going to click on Properties or double-click on it, yeah. and it'll say Obtain an IP Address Automatically. Yeah. Okay, so this is where we're going to put an IP, uh, 192.168.1.150. So how do I know to put in this information? When you are on that other computer, it will say uh, 192.168.1, then another number. Uh, the last number, you're, that's, that number is assigned to that machine for a specific reason. You want to give the computer that you are troubleshooting a different IP address. So I chose 150 because it is more unique. It's not being taken from another machine. Um, if it is, you can go up to 200 if you truly wanted to. So anywhere between 2 and 254, well, 253 to be exact. So you can choose anywhere between from 192.168.1.2 from 192.168.1.2. 168.1.253 yours might also say uh, 10.0.0.7 or something like that uh, but that's uh, where you want to copy the IPv4 address into the IP address right here and we're just giving it that unique number um, so we were at 150 for the subnet it will automatically populate. If it doesn't, it'll, you want to put 255.255.255.0. Now, as for your uh, default gateway, this is highly important. Pay attention now. Um, it'll say uh, default gateway. So it'll say 192.168.1.1. This is your modem. This is your router, um, whatever um, it is connected to the Internet with. So that um, dot one that will always be taken dot one dot one the last number you can never use that number ever because it is taken and that's basically like the main uh, the main hotel number where you go to the office and get your key and they'll give you the key to uh, go access your room so you're gonna put one nine two one six eight point one point one again yours will show differently it'll say one nine two point zero point zero point one something like that and as for your preferred dns you're gonna put in the default gateway ip address again one nine two one six eight one dot one and you're gonna go ahead and click ok now uh... so this changed from uh... from twenty two to one fifty Let's go ahead and OK that as well. See, now you, that changed from, from 22 to 150. So if it shows it on that, on that, um, on your end, and you're able to connect to the internet now, awesome. But since you manually changed your IP settings, and it no longer shows that little cautious sign or the red X, uh, whatever it may show and it just shows that clear monitor or the icon on the bottom right um, you're gonna have the same IP settings so if you uh, take 
for example, this is a laptop that we're working on, and you take this laptop to a friend's computer or to a hotel, uh, to a different network, you're not going to have a good connection unless if they have the same IP address networking. But um, if for some reason it starts working again, all you got to do is go back to the, uh, the settings where we did and obtain IP address automatically and I'll get that IP address automatically if you go visit a friend's house or uh, hop on a different network because the IP settings are not going to be the same sometimes they are um, sometimes they aren't so that is it uh, hopefully this helps you get connected with the internet if this does not help you get connected with the internet basically when you call up tech support they're going to have you run through this same diagnostics of what we just been through. The same exact diagnostics. Um, maybe a little bit more, you know, just to check your cable or is it a Wi-Fi password issue. But um, they're going to go through the same similar steps. And now if that still doesn't work, then there's something wrong with the computer or the cable uh, or the Wi-Fi password. And maybe the modem itself but that's it so if you guys have any questions anything at all um, go ahead and drop a comment down below if you like this video give me a thumbs up uh, so pardon me for my child he's kinda like going at it just being a child but um, give me a share uh, with this video uh, and also subscribe uh, to get more further contact other than that you guys have an awesome day